What's the difference between a freelancer that struggles to land job after job after job versus a freelancer that's fully booked out with their cherry pick of clients? I'll tell you because back in 2016, when I first started on my freelance journey, I was that freelancer that struggled hardcore to land job after job and was drowning in brutal rejection emails. But with a generous sprinkle of mistakes made, a healthy dose of lessons learned and a dash of perseverance, don't know where that came from, I became fully booked out as a freelancer in 2017 and have been since as a freelancer hitting six figures in 2020 and working with over 40 plus freelance clients of my own, plus working with dozens of freelancers on my clients' teams and my own teams as a business manager. So I wanted to share a few things I've noticed along the way in particular, seven special ingredients that cook up, this is supposed to be like a witch cooking a brew, <laughs> that cook up a freelancer that is booked out, loved on, and clung to desperately by clients. I call it the unicorn, the U-N-I-C-O-R-N factor, aka the seven ways to differentiate yourself as a freelancer to book more gigs and make more bread. Hey, uh, it's Daya, freelancer, digital business manager, most recently entrepreneur. And as always, you can find sections on the play bar below. If you want to skip to a certain part of the video, your time is precious. Take what you need. And if you want to watch this on 2x, I won't be offended in the least. Okay, let's dive in. A behind the scenes fun fact, when I first listed out all the things I wanted to talk about in this video, it was the you poof factor, which is not as catchy as the unicorn factor. So I did have to rework it and painstakingly find seven words to fit into the unicorn acronym. So please suspend your disbelief and criticism if something is a reach, I was knee deep in the thesaurus and it took me ages to find any of these words to fit this acronym. So the U in unicorn stands for USP. I know an acronym within an acronym anarchy data. USP stands for unique selling proposition. And this is really important that we always have this in mind when we are selling really any service or product. We want to know what we uniquely bring to the table. What do we do better than others in a sea of people? We need some sort of an edge, a competitive advantage that says, pick me. We, we want to be a pick me in these scenarios. So your USP can be your experience and technical skills. Yes, there are also less obvious USPs that you might have, even if you have no experience at all working. So your USP could be soft skills, like you could be a stellar problem solver, you could be excellent at organization, it could be also your enthusiasm to learn and to figure things out. For example, my content manager, Chelsea, one of her many wonderful USPs is that she is extremely empathetic and thoughtful, which means she's always thinking about how she could help me more, which is a huge USP to me as a business owner. Your USP could also be your personal passion for your services, which pushes you harder than others to learn more and figure things out. So what are you a dork about? You know, maybe that aligns with the services you offer. You guys know Max. Max is so passionate about what he does as a data engineer. He's such a little dork for it that he spends his free time reading articles and watching YouTube videos, which then coincidentally make him much better at his job, which is a huge USP that he has. Your USP could be in the how you offer your service. Maybe you offer your service differently than how your competitors do it. Maybe the way you deliver a marketing strategy is different or you use a different approach, a different process, which generates different kinds of results. So for example, my video editor, Matilda, who's watching this right now, one of her many awesome USPs is that she knows how to use Procreate to create these little hand-drawn elements you see in my videos. And that's a great USP and it really sets her apart from other editors and is a huge reason as to why I hired her. Your USP could be your client experience, that clients are so incredibly taken care of and feel so good after working with you that they refer you out to everyone. Your USP could be that you have a killer portfolio because you did a bunch of fake portfolio projects to build up that portfolio so clients can see that you know what you're doing and maybe everybody else that's applying for the jobs don't have such a portfolio. So these are really important to think on because everyone can offer email management or web development or project management, but only you can offer a tasty blend of flavor that's unique to you. That, that, that came out creepier than I intended. Um, if you don't know what your USB is, what sets you apart, even in the smallest of ways, a client won't know why they should pick you, why they should hire you over everyone else. And everyone has uniquenesses to them. And not only that, there are also an astounding number of ways to create new USPs or add to your list of USPs. So get to it. Because to get booked out, you have to have a clear answer to why you. Plus, when you have a clear answer to why you, it builds your confidence, which by the way, is another great soft skill that will definitely get you to where you want to go faster. The N in unicorn stands for niche. It's like they say, the reaches are in the niches. That felt so wrong. 
If you are a beginner, don't worry about niche, but once you do wade a little bit deeper into the freelance pool, it's time to consider how you might want to focus down a little bit. Focus is good. Focus is important. Focus is memorable. Focus is everything. It's much easier to recommend and refer someone who is a digital business manager who helps online course creators versus someone who does a little bit of everything under the sun. You're not 100% sure what they're specialized in. Serving everyone means that you serve no one. Offering everything means people don't get what you offer. Clarity as a word is way overused, but as a practice is way underused. So find clarity on what matters to you and your work and simplify down where you can. You can niche in so many things. You can niche in the types of clients you work with, aka I work with six-figure female entrepreneurs, or the services you offer, aka I offer project management, or the industry you work in, aka I help dentists, or the types of products or services your clients sell, aka I help people who have online courses or digital products. So, so many options. Don't get overwhelmed. You don't have to go from no niche to tiny hyper-focused niche in one day. You can niche slowly and take it one step at a time as you find what you truly like, but this is just an important thing to keep in the back of your mind. And I promise it will naturally unfold as you continue on your freelance journey. I is for interest. This one is often overlooked. This is, there's something honestly very special and I speak from my own experience. When you get to work with a freelancer who is genuinely excited and cares about what they're doing because they're so interested. It's the difference between sure, whatever, I can do that versus I would love to help with that. I'll come up with a few different approaches for us. I'm so excited to get going. I can't wait, you know? like. We talk a lot about profitability of our services as freelancers, but I think sometimes we forget that when we are personally interested and passionate about something, eventually it does become profitable because we work really hard at getting good at it. As long as there's some sort of market demand, you can make most interests profitable eventually. Like personally, for example, I love planning and organizing. It is a huge interest of mine. I'm a huge dork for it, always have been. I love to color code, make lists on lists on lists. And I'm the person in the friend group that makes the minute by minute travel itinerary for trips. So I have basically spent my entire life prepping and practicing out of interest to become a freelance digital business manager, which is exactly then what I offered for years as a freelancer because it sprouted out of my own interest. So a great way to differentiate yourself as a freelancer is to focus on what your person interested in or find ways to sprinkle in elements that you find interesting into your work. And not to mention interest is really, really helpful because we don't want to just create a short term freelancing career, right? We want to build sustainable, fulfilling careers as freelancers. And of course, interest is a huge factor in how sustainable something is for us. So what's interesting to you? How can you incorporate more of that into what you do? And I think personally, if you aren't at least a little interested in what you offer as a freelancer, it will be much harder to do it sustainably enough to get booked out with it. The C is for communication. Another one that people talk a lot about yet is still too underrated for whatever reason. So much of your job as a freelancer involves communicating properly, explaining what you do, clarifying what your process looks like, negotiating, landing the client, onboarding the client well, regular check-in and updates during the project, solving issues, conflict, offboarding clients well. Everything is communication. If you do not know how to communicate, you will really, 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 really struggle to get booked out as a freelancer freelancer, freelancer. And it's really not all that complicated to communicate well either. So before you land a client, you need to be focused on, does the client truly understand what I do and how it benefits them? If no, you need to get clear on yourself, practice your elevator pitch, make a no brainer portfolio full of, here's what I can do for you and revisit the you of unicorn to get clear on how what you do uniquely benefits them. So that's your main focus and what you mainly wanna communicate. And after you land the client, you need to ensure one, does the client know what's going on? And two, are they happy with what's going on? That's it, you need to set clear expectations of when they can hear from you and then just do that and make sure they're happy. Make sure if there's anything they're not happy with that they're telling you those things so you can fix it before it's too late. Okay, stay with me. The O stands for on it. <laughs> Not sure if you can tell, but it was tricky to come up with something for O. On it means you do what you say you're going to do, AKA I can trust you to be on top of it. And I know that sounds so simple, but it is a huge problem in my own experience and in the experiences of the business owners that I talk to and work with that are in my mastermind, that kind of stuff. A freelancer who is on it takes their work seriously. 
They honor deadlines. They honor commitments. They are there when they say they will be. They aren't late. They are on top of their shiz. If you are not on top of things and you find a lot of things are slipping through the cracks, go watch my video on how to manage multiple freelance clients and organize your calendar and yourself as a freelancer so that you can be on it. And I promise like this makes a huge difference as to whether you will be rebooked or referred because if somebody cannot trust you to do what you say you're going to do, there's nothing else to it. Like trust is one of the biggest factors in client relationships. And if you erode that trust, it's really, really, really hard to earn that back with this person or any future person that might check with this person how it was working with you. The R stands for rates, aka your pricing. Pricing is an easy differentiator as a freelancer and there are a few ways you can use it. So one is you can price yourself lower than industry standard. So this is a differentiation strategy I only recommend to beginners. Uh, I don't recommend going too low, but it's okay in my opinion this is a controversial opinion, to go a little lower to incentivize people to work with you in the beginning. So I started at $10 an hour because I was a baby duckling with no experience, no testimonials, no network. So why should they trust me and choose me? Because I'm cheaper. If I had come out of the gate with like $40 an hour, you can bet it would have taken me much longer to sign my first client, much less make my way to getting booked out. Um, so that's definitely one thing to consider if you're just getting started and you're trying to get a few clients under your belt. Pricing yourself higher is also a differentiating strategy that is that can be tricky to get right, but very useful for intermediate and advanced freelancers. You know, your pricing can essentially tell the story of I'm top tier. We are white glove. We handle everything. You have arrived at the five star hotel. Here's your complimentary champagne. We've rolled out the red carpet. Welcome. We are the best in the biz. So you can kind of consider where you are in your freelance journey and whether your rates can help differentiate you to get you to get booked out faster. All right, the N stands for non-hard skills. And this one's definitely a stretch because what I mean is soft skills. And I will say this until I'm purple in the face. If you do not have technical skills, if you don't have a million years of work experience, you need to make sure your soft skills are bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. You need to make sure your soft skills are so good, out of this world good, that it makes up for anything you might not know yet. So soft skills are a huge differentiator between freelancers who get booked out and freelancers who never get booked again. And I've got a video on the top soft skills you have to keep in check if you do want to become a top tier freelancer if you want to watch that. Okay, now that you know what the unicorn factor is and you might have identified a few ways that you can work on yourself or differentiate yourself to land more clients, it's time to figure out why you're not making as much money. Let's watch me edge here. Uh, as you want as a freelancer. So click on this video to find seven reasons you're not making more money as a freelancer right here. Yep. Go on. Give that a little tap. Just a little tap. No pressure. Only if you want to. And you'll want to. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay. Bye.